Basic Life Support, Wikipedia Article Audio Basic Life Support is a level of medical care which is used for victims of life-threatening illnesses or injuries until they can be given full medical care at a hospital. It can be provided by trained medical personnel, including emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and by qualified bystanders. Many countries have guidelines on how to provide basic life support which are formulated by professional medical bodies in those countries. The guidelines outline algorithms for the management of a number of conditions, such as cardiac arrest, choking and drowning. BLS does not include the use of drugs or invasive skills, and can be contrasted with the provision of advanced life support. Firefighters, lifeguards, and police officers are often required to be BLS certified. BLS skills are also appropriate for many other professions, such as daycare providers, teachers, and security personnel and social workers especially working in the hospitals and ambulance drivers. Background United States CPR provided in the field increases the time available for higher medical responders to arrive and provide ALS care. An important advance in providing BLS is the availability of the Automated External Defibrillator or AED. This improves survival outcomes in cardiac arrest cases. Basic life support promotes adequate blood circulation in addition to breathing through a clear airway. These goals are codified in mnemonics such as ABC and CAB. The American Heart Association endorses CAB in order to emphasize the primary importance of chest compressions in cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Healthy people maintain the CABs by themselves. In an emergency situation, due to illness or trauma, BLS helps the patient ensure his or her own CABs or assists in maintaining for the patient who is unable to do so. For airways, this will include manually opening the patient's airway or possible insertion of oral or nasal adjuncts, to keep the airway unblocked. For breathing, this may include artificial respiration, often assisted by emergency oxygen. For circulation, this may include bleeding control or cardiopulmonary resuscitation techniques to manually stimulate the heart and assist its pumping action. BLS in the United States is generally identified with emergency medical technicians basic. However, the American Heart Association SBLS protocol is designed for use by lay people, as well as students and others certified first responder and to some extent, higher medical function personnel. It includes cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, drowning, and foreign body airway obstruction. EMTB is the highest level of healthcare provider that is limited to the BLS protocol. Higher medical functions use some OR all of the advanced cardiac life support protocols, in addition to BLS protocols. Chain of Survival The medical algorithm for providing basic life support to adults in the USA was published in 2005 in the journal Circulation by the American Heart Association. The AHA uses a four-linked chain of survival to illustrate the steps needed to resuscitate a collapsed victim. BLS Course Bystanders with training in BLS can perform the first three of the four steps. The AHA recommended steps for resuscitation are known as DRS CABD. If the patient is unresponsive and not breathing, the responder begins CPR with chest compressions at a rate of 120 beats per minute in cycles of 30 chest compressions to two breaths. If responders are unwilling or unable to perform rescue breathing, they are to perform compression-only CPR, because any attempt at resuscitation is better than no attempt. 
for children, for whom the main cause of cardiac arrest is from breathing-related issues, five initial rescue breaths is highly advised followed by the same 30 to 2 cycles. Adult BLS Sequence According to the American Heart Association, in order to be certified in BLS, a student must take an online or in-person course. However, an online BLS course must be followed with an in-person skills session in order to obtain a certification issued by the American Heart Association. Drowning Assess asterisk if the patient is breathing normally, and pulse is present then the patient should be placed in the recovery position and monitored. Transport if required, or wait for the EMS to arrive and take over. Hypothermia If the victim has no suspected cervical spine trauma, open the airway using the head tilt slash chin lift maneuver, if the victim has suspected neck trauma, the airway should be opened with the jaw thrust technique. If the jaw thrust is ineffective at opening slash maintaining the airway, a very careful head tilt slash chin lift should be performed. Continue chest compression at a rate of 100 compressions per minute for all age groups, allowing chest to recoil in between. For adults push up to 2-2.4 inches i.e. 6 cm and for child up to 2 inches i.e. 5 cm. For infants 1 to 1.5 inches i.e. 4 cm or one third of the chest diameter enteroposteriorly. Choking Rescuers should provide CPR as soon as an unresponsive victim is removed from the water. In particular, rescue breathing is important in this situation. A lone rescuer is typically advised to give CPR for a short time before leaving the victim to call emergency medical services. Since the primary cause of cardiac arrest and death in drowning and choking victims is hypoxia, it is more important to provide rescue breathing as quickly as possible in these situations, whereas for victims of VF cardiac arrest chest compressions and defibrillation are more important. In Choking can occur from foreign body airway obstruction United Kingdom Adult BLS guidelines in the United Kingdom were also published in 2005 by the Resuscitation Council, based on the 2005 International Consensus on Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation and Emergency Cardiovascular Care Science with Treatment Recommendations published in November 2005. Adult These guidelines differ from previous versions in a number of ways. Circulation, providing an adequate blood supply to tissue, especially critical organs so as to deliver oxygen to all cells and remove metabolic waste, via the perfusion of blood throughout the body, airway, the protection and maintenance of a clear passageway for gases to pass between the lungs and the atmosphere, breathing, inflation and deflation of the lungs via the airway. These changes were introduced to simplify the algorithm, to allow for faster decision making and to maximize the time spent giving chest compressions, this is because interruptions in chest compressions have been shown to reduce the chance of survival. It is also acknowledged that rescuers may either be unable, or unwilling, to give effective rescue breaths, in this situation, continuing chest compressions alone is advised although this is only effective for about 5 minutes. The term BLS is also used in some non-English speaking countries for the education of first responders. If patient is not breathing assess pulse at the carotid on your side for an adult, at the brachial for a child and infant for 6 seconds and not more than 10 seconds, Begin immediately with chest compressions at a rate of 30 chest compressions in 18 seconds followed by 2 rescue breaths in 4 seconds each lasting for 2 seconds.
Adult choking. Other countries. Blind finger sweeps should never be performed, as they may push foreign objects deeper into the airway. This procedure has been discarded as this may push the foreign body down the airway and increase chances of an obstruction. Keep counting aloud. Press hard and fast maintaining the rate of at about 100 slash minute. Allow recoil of chest fully between each compression. In adults irrespective of the number or rescuers, for every 30 chest compressions give 2 rescue breaths and in child victim, give 2 breaths per 30 compression if only one rescuer is present but 2 breaths per 15 compressions in case where there are 2 rescuers, continue for 5 cycles or 2 minutes before reassessing pulse. Attempt to administer two artificial ventilations using the mouth-to-mouth -mouth technique, or a bag valve mask. The mouth-to-mouth -mouth technique is no longer recommended, unless a face shield is present. Verify that the chest rises and falls, if it does not, reposition the airway using the appropriate technique and try again. If ventilation is still unsuccessful, and the victim is unconscious, it is possible that they have a foreign body in their airway. Begin chest compressions, stopping every 30 compressions, rechecking the airway for obstructions, removing any found, and reattempting ventilation. If the ventilations are successful, assess for the presence of a pulse at the carotid artery. If a pulse is detected, then the patient should continue to receive artificial ventilations at an appropriate rate and transport it immediately. Otherwise, begin CPR at a ratio of 30 colon 2 compressions to ventilations at 100 compressions slash minute for 5 cycles. After 5 cycles of CPR, the BLS protocol should be repeated from the beginning, assessing the patient's airway checking for spontaneous breathing, and checking for a spontaneous pulse as per new protocol sequence CAB. Laypersons are commonly instructed not to perform reassessment, but this step is always performed by healthcare professionals, if an AED is available it should be activated immediately and its directives followed and, call for clearance before defibrillation slash shock should be performed. If defibrillation is performed, begin chest compression immediately after shock. BLS protocols continue until the patient regains a pulse. The rescuer is relieved by another rescuer of equivalent or higher training. The rescuer is too physically tired to continue CPR, or the patient is pronounced dead by a medical doctor. At the end of five cycles of CPR, Always perform assessment via the AED for a shockable rhythm, and if indicated, defibrillate and repeat assessment before doing another 5. Cycles In unresponsive victims with hypothermia, the breathing and pulse should be checked for 30 to 45 seconds as both breathing and heart rate can be very slow in this condition, if cardiac arrest is confirmed. CPR should be started immediately. Wet clothes should be removed, and the victim should be insulated from wind. CPR should be continued until the victim is assessed by advanced care providers. Rescuers should intervene in victims who show signs of severe airway obstruction, such as a silent cough, cyanosis, or inability to speak or breathe, if a victim is coughing forcefully. Rescuers should not interfere with this process, if a victim shows signs of severe airway obstruction, abdominal thrusts should be applied in rapid sequence until the obstruction is relieved. If this is not effective, chest thrusts can also be used. Chest thrusts can also be used in obese victims or victims in late pregnancy. Abdominal thrusts should not be used in infants under one year of age due to risk of causing injury, if a victim becomes unresponsive he should be lowered to the ground, and the rescuer should call emergency medical services and initiate CPR.
When the airway is opened during CPR, the rescuer should look into the mouth for an object causing obstruction, and remove it if it is evident. They allow the rescuer to diagnose cardiac arrest if the victim is unresponsive and not breathing normally. Rescuers are taught to give chest compressions in the center of the chest, rather than measuring from the lower border of the sternum. Rescue breaths should be given over one second rather than two seconds. For an adult victim, the initial two rescue breaths should be omitted, so that 30 chest compressions are given immediately after a cardiac arrest has been diagnosed. Spain, SVB, Belgium, ADM, Decal Urgent slash EHBO, Brazil, SBV, France, PSE1 and PSE2, first aid as part of a team. Level 2 includes stretching and teamwork, Poland, Podstwo of Zabigi Resuscitation slash KPP, Portugal, SBV, Germany, Lebensretten Sofertma, Namen, Romania, SVB, Netherlands, BLS, Turkey, TYD.